Hey guys, Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm here with a myth-busting episode today. It's potentially a big one. I'm going to shock some people here. You know, when I do a myth-busting episode, um, I get a lot of hate mail usually. But open your mind to this, guys. Some things in cycling, we're propagating again and again, but they're just not true. And this one, <laughs> this is one of the big ones. In fact, I've looked to see if anyone disputes this out there on the internet, if anyone is using their brain and seeing common sense. And that myth is that wider tires roll faster. They have a lower rolling resistance because of a change in their contact patch. Because of a change in their contact patch? But, uh, come on guys, where did this rumor come from? Well, it's not a rumor. This is actually a claim, a claim that's been made by Schwalbe and other tire companies starting in about 2010. Not that long ago, really, if you think about it. What they're saying is if you take a big tire like this one here, this 28 millimeter on this Mavic Comite awesome, you know, deep dish wheel, they're saying the 28 will roll better than the 25 or the 23. Is that really true? Let me have a think about that for a second. I want you to have a think about it as well. Because this is going to break the laws of physics if it's true. Because the contact patch must be pretty much the same area if there is the same weight and the same pressure. If there's the same pressure in the tyre and the same force on that bike, i.e. the same rider, and you swap out the tyres, the contact patch must be the same area, isn't it? Must, isn't that the case? Or is there something really weird going on? Okay, okay, to be fair, they are saying that it's the difference in the contact patch. But even when you look at the difference in the contact patch, like, yeah, there is a difference. And maybe uh, if you could visualize this, if you were filling up a bathtub, you know, really fat bathtub, and you had to have the same area across the bottom of the bath, and you filled up a big fat bath versus a long and thin bath, then to get to the same surface area, obviously the shape of that um, fill, the fill, the water in the bath would change. So the equivalent in tires is that for a wide tire, your contact patch is, you know, generally chubby like the tire. It's more like horizontal. And for a thin tire, like 19 millimeter or 20 millimeter, it's more long and thin. But in reality, you know, the difference between, you know, 25 and 28, the contact patch area, Remember, the actual area is exactly the same, but the contact patch dimensions, I should say, the difference is actually about one millimeter. So they're saying then that one millimeter makes such a difference? Are they saying then that, that, that the rolling characteristics make a difference because of the way the sidewall is being compressed? I don't buy that, guys. I really don't buy it. And in fact, if you think about it, if the pressures are the same and the contact patch is the same area, what is really changing is the compressibility of the tire. So if you take a 25 millimeter tire, it might compress four millimeters. If you pump it up to, let's say, 83 psi in your, uh, you know, 80 kilogram bike and rider, but the 32 millimeter tire will compress to around three millimeters, i.e., three millimeters indent on the road, yeah? and the 23 millimeter tire will compress around about six millimeters. So, hang on a second, the 28 and 32 millimeters will compress only a little bit. Potentially the 32 millimeter tire compresses only half the amount of the 23 millimeter tire when you've got the same contact patch at the same area. Obviously then, if the tire is less compressible, the fatter tire, Yes, it's going to be rolling faster, but it's going to give a harsher ride, totally defeating the object of having a wider, fatter tire. And the narrower tire is effectively soft. So the feel of the tire, even to the touch, for a wide tire at the same pressure is going to be actually harder. And the narrower tire, the feel of it, is going to be actually softer. And on the bike, you're going to get that same, same effect. So it's not a like-for-like -like comparison. In fact, on the Schwalbe website, this is what's also confusing. They've actually put like a scientific chart to prove the case. And they're using a ridiculously big example, like a fat bike tire, 60 millimeter, they call it the big apple. 
and they're saying that the 60 millimeter Big Apple is rolling just as well, in fact better, they're saying it's better than the 37 millimeter conventional like big road tire at around about, the comparison is two bar versus four bar. But actually if you work it out, that's not a strictly fair comparison. It's not a like for like pressure comparison and actually the 37 millimeter would be the equivalent of 4.7 bar. Sorry to mix PSI and bar in this video by the way. And if you want to check that out, check out our tire calculator here. We work out what appropriate pressure you get for your weight and your size and your, and your speed. And we also do the same in our tire chooser calculator. So what I'm saying to Schwalbe is I'm calling you out on that graph is not a like for like comparison on pressures. Okay, fine. I need to take a break here. I need to take a breath and say what I'm not saying as much as what I am saying. Am I saying the fat tires, wide tires don't roll better? We should be going as narrow as possible. No, I'm not saying that wider tires don't roll better. I'm saying we've got to make a like for like comparison. And the like for like comparison is, I want you to think of your tire like as a spring. So the outside, the cushioning is like a mini springs all the way around. If you are riding with different shaped tires, different size tires, different width tires, what you want on the road for an equivalent feeling is an equivalent spring effect. So what you actually want is an equivalent cushioning. So let's call that five millimeter drop. So you want say five millimeter drop on a 23 millimeter, a 25, a 28 and a 32. That will be a like for like comparison. So in this kind of thought experiment, what would the pressure be if the drop was five millimeters in the carcass rather than a different amount of drop? If it was five millimeters across all those tires, then the 20, the 25 millimeter would be around 87 psi. The 28 millimeter would be around 83 psi. The 32 millimeter would be around 75 psi. And going to the opposite end, the 23 millimeter would be around 92 psi. And what about the patch? Obviously the contact patch would change, yeah? So the contact patch size would be around, for the 25 millimeter, around about 310 millimeter squared. The 28 millimeter would be around 360 millimeter squared. The 20, the 32 millimeter tire would be around 424 millimeter squared. And at the 23, it would be around 280 millimeter squared. So in other words, the contact patch would be much smaller, actually around half the size in area on the 23 versus the 20, 32. But the pressure would be around, what, 20% difference. A 20% difference from one into the other in pressure, but actually a 50% difference in contact size. But if you did that, what would happen is the rolling resistance would be the same across each tire. That's the headline, guys. If you compare like for like, and I'm, what I'm saying is like for like is not the same pressure, it's actually the same kind of spring effect, then the rolling resistance is actually the same across each tire. Which kind of raises a point, what's the point going for a bigger tire then, if the rolling resistance is the same? Well, remember the contact patch is better, so does that mean there's more grip? Actually, that's also a myth that the grip on the tire is totally dependent on the contact patch. That's, what is that called, that Amanton's law? No, no, it's not strictly related to just the contact patch area. It's more to do with the coefficient of friction on the road. However, to be fair, if the coefficient of friction is low, i.e., look, it's slippy conditions, you know, it's wet, it's a wet white line in the road, or it's very dusty, or you're descending at high speed, then yes, the contact patch does become important. So it does increase confidence in basically two conditions, high speed cornering and descending, then yes, a bigger tire is better. So when then is a smaller tire, a narrower tire better? Well, a narrower tire is fundamentally better for aerodynamics, you know, compare the Big Apple 60 millimeter tire with the 23 millimeter tire, the 23 millimeter tire is going to have better aerodynamics, yeah? So if your priority is purely speed, like you don't care about cornering that much, you don't care about descending, you're not in a massive sportive, then probably having a narrower tire is better. Subject to the caveat 
that you've got to compare like for like, and also on very bumpy surfaces, on uneven surfaces, then yes, there is this impedance type of loss phenomenon. That is very true, that a wider tire will absorb bumps and roll more smoothly. So basically, in bad conditions, a wider tire is an advantage because it rolls over the bumps and it can be relatively soft, relatively smooth, let's say, for your needs. Whereas to get a like-for-like -like comparison, the smaller, narrower tire to get that same five millimeter drop is going to be a relatively, you know, high PSI, around about 92 PSI for the 23 millimeter. <laughs> Okay guys, that's my myth busting over. I'm sure some of you are not going to like this video. Uh, if you dispute it, I don't mind. Show me the data that shows, that shows that I'm wrong and I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at it, you know. But if you want to check me out in terms of my data on this, go over to bicyclerollingresistance.com and look at their tire tests. Look at their tire tests 23, 25, 28 and 32 millimeter with a like for like comparison. Then do the same for an equal pressure comparison and it pretty much backs up what I say. If you do equal pressure comparison, yes, the rolling resistance does improve with a fatter tire because it's effectively getting harder for that volume and you're basically getting um, less indentation as you go. So it's effectively overinflated for that tire. So boom, there we go guys, I put the case to you that a wider tire doesn't roll faster because of a change in the contact patch shape. It doesn't roll faster, it rolls the same if you allow for the same like-for-like -like comparison in drop, not for the same percentage drop, but the actual same millimeter drop. And also you equalize the pressures across those tires. Secondly, what I've said is that friction doesn't really depend on our contact patch area. Yes, there is an effect in slippy conditions, Hence why we've got the Poggio MP3 or the Yamaha Nikon bikes, which are, you know, somewhat ridiculous. Well, they're not really ridiculous, but check them out. They are those two wheel at the front bikes. You know, there's a compromise with that design. So having more rubber on the road isn't really needed most of the time. You know, if you're an equal rider, equal mass with an equal pressure in your tire, then you will have exactly the same contact patch area regardless of the tire you put on the bike guys okay guys take care this is alex signing off on fast fitness tips check us out on patreon as always check us out on our strava club and uh, see you in the next video guys take care